Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, consider subscribing for more content about George R. R. Martin's incredible world of A Song of Ice and Fire. Today we're delving into a fascinating aspect of this universe, its magical systems. We'll go over the main types of magic used in the series, some examples of their use, and the characters associated with them. Just a fair warning, there might be mild spoilers ahead, so if you haven't finished reading the books or watching the series, proceed with caution. First up, let's discuss warging. In essence, warging is the ability to enter the mind of an animal and control its actions. The term is especially used for those who can enter the minds of wolves. One of our main characters, Bran Stark, is a known warg. With guidance from the Three-Eyed Raven, Bran's warging ability develops to the point where he can enter the mind of his direwolf, Summer, and even Hodor, a simple-minded human. Let's delve a bit deeper into the world of warging. As we mentioned before, warging involves entering the mind of another being, which presents fascinating ethical considerations. Warging into another human, as Bran does with Hodor, is particularly controversial. It's seen as a violation of a person's mind and body, a dangerous crossing of boundaries. Remember, a warg cannot live in the skin of a man for long, as the wildling Varamir Sixkins warns in his dying moments. Speaking of Varamir, he is one of the most notable wargs in the north, able to control not just one, but several animals at once. He provides us a broader perspective of this ability and its use among the free folk beyond the wall. Among the Stark children, it's suggested that not only Bran, but also Jon Snow and Arya Stark have this ability, connected to their direwolves. It's interesting to note that the old gods, the gods of the north, seem to have a strong connection to this form of magic. Warging also comes with dangers. Losing oneself in the mind of an animal, forgetting human feelings and thoughts, is a constant risk. The deeper one delves into this magic, the harder it may be to hold on to their humanity. It's a captivating example of the complexities and moral ambiguities tied to the use of magic in Martin's world. The concept of warging even intertwines with the idea of life and death in the series. It's revealed that a skilled warg can transfer their consciousness into an animal at the moment of their death a phenomenon the free folk call the second life. This is experienced firsthand by Varamir Sixkins, who enters one of his wolves as he dies. This second life concept forms the basis of an intriguing fan theory surrounding Jon Snow's death. In the books, Jon's last word as he's being assassinated is Ghost, the name of his direwolf. Some readers speculate that Jon may have walked into Ghost at the moment of his death, preserving his consciousness until a potential resurrection can occur. This theory also extends to Rob Stark's death at the Red Wedding. In his last moments, Rob murmurs the word Grey Wind, his direwolf, leading some fans to theorize that he may have tried to warg into Grey Wind. If this theory holds, it could mean Rob experienced his death twice, once as himself and once as Grey Wind, who was also killed during the Red Wedding. Of course, these are just theories, but they showcase the potential and breadth of warging as a survival tool and the possible horrific experiences tied to it. While we've spoken at length about warging, it's essential to mention a closely related concept, skin changing. While these two terms are sometimes used interchangeably, there is a subtle difference in the books. Warging specifically refers to entering the mind of a wolf or dog, which is likely why it's so commonly used in the north where direwolves are prevalent. The term comes from an Old Norse verb, varga, which means wolf. Skin changing, on the other hand, is a broader term that refers to entering the mind of any animal. This is the skill that we see characters like Varamir Sixkins utilizing, as he controls not only wolves, but also other creatures, including a snow bear, a shadow cat, and various birds. Both warging and skin changing are seen as gifts, rare abilities that allow a deeper connection with the natural world. Yet, they also come with risks and ethical dilemmas, as we've previously discussed. It's these complexities that make the magic in Martin's world so captivating and grounded, despite its fantastical elements. Greensight, often associated with the old gods of the forest, is another form of magic in the series. It refers to prophetic dreams, often called green dreams. People who have these dreams are called greenseers. Like warging, Bran Stark shows this ability, his dreams often filled with symbolism and future events. Now let's delve further into greensight, the prophetic ability to perceive events before they happen, often through dreams. Jojen Reed, a character from the north, is a significant figure associated with greensight. Jojen has green dreams that are symbolic but often accurately predict future events. His dreams lead him and his sister Mira to find Bran Stark and help him unlock his own potential as a green seer. One of the most haunting aspects of Jojen Reed's story is his understanding of his own fate. He hints at several points that he has seen his own death in his green dreams, 
knowing that he won't return from the journey north with Bran. This acceptance of his destiny showcases the emotional weight and consequences of having Greensight. Interestingly, some fans speculate that Yojin's end was more sinister than what is revealed in the books. This theory, known as Yojin Paste, suggests that the weirwood paste Bran consumes to enhance his magical abilities may contain Yojin's blood or even his flesh. Proponents of this theory cite the paste's description, its strange taste, and the timing of Yojin's disappearance in the books. The idea behind this theory is that the three-eyed raven, a character who has already shown a willingness to blur ethical lines for what he perceives as the greater good, might use Yojin's life to strengthen Bran's powers. However, this theory remains unconfirmed and is one of many illustrating the depth of speculation and discussion within the fan community. In the series, the most notable Greenseer we meet is the three-eyed raven, also known as Brynden Rivers, who mentors Bran Stark in his magical abilities. A former Targaryen bastard and member of the Night's Watch, Brynden has lived beyond the lifespan of a normal man by merging with a weirwood tree, further showing the connection between the old gods and this type of magic. His knowledge and guidance of Greensight and Warging are instrumental in Bran's development. It's also worth noting that the children of the forest are described as the original Greenseers. These non-human beings have a deep connection to the land and the old gods, and their magic is strongly tied to nature, further underlining the link between the old gods, the weirwood trees, and Greensight. As with Warging, Greensight comes with its own challenges. Interpreting the dreams correctly is not always straightforward, and it can be difficult to change the course of events even when foreseen. As Yojin often says, the green dreams take their toll, indicating the mental and physical burden of carrying such a powerful and demanding ability. Blood magic, feared and infamous, is often associated with the Shadowlands beyond Ashai and the Dothraki. It involves rituals and spells that use blood as a catalyst. Miri Mazdur, a witch encountered by Daenerys Targaryen, uses blood magic in an attempt to save Khal Drogo's life, with disastrous consequences. This magic is often portrayed as dangerous and unpredictable. One of the most vivid examples of blood magic in the series occurs in Daenerys Targaryen's storyline with Khal Drogo's injury. When Drogo is gravely injured, Daenerys enlists the help of Miri Mazdur, a magi, or witch, who uses blood magic in an attempt to heal him. However, Daenerys doesn't understand the full implications of using such magic. Miri Mazdur uses the life force of Daenerys' unborn son, Rhaegar, causing Drogo to fall into a vegetative state. This tragedy highlights the dangerous and unpredictable nature of blood magic and the terrible price it can extract. Melisandre of Ashai, a priestess of the Lord of Light, also employs blood magic in her service to Stannis Baratheon. She believes that only death can pay for life, and uses the blood of Edric Storm, a bastard son of King Robert Baratheon, for her rituals. In one of these rituals, she casts leeches filled with Edric's blood into a fire while naming three rival kings. Later, all three named kings die, though the exact influence of her blood magic ritual is left somewhat ambiguous. Cersei Lannister's storyline also intertwines with blood magic through her childhood encounter with Maggie the Frog, a reputed witch and fortune teller. When Cersei was a girl, she visited Maggie, who used blood magic to reveal her future. She foretold that Cersei would become queen until a younger, more beautiful queen would take all she holds dear. Maggie also predicted that Cersei's children would die before her, and that her little brother would end her life. These prophecies have haunted Cersei throughout the series, driving much of her actions and paranoia, showing once again the heavy toll and influence of blood magic. One intriguing part of Maggie the Frog's prophecy is her reference to the Valonqar, a High Valyrian term meaning little brother, who is foretold to end Cersei's life. Naturally, Cersei interprets this as Tyrion, her younger twin, who she has always mistrusted and despised. However, many fans speculate that the prophecy could refer to her other younger twin, Jaime. While Jaime and Cersei were born at the same time, Cersei was technically born first, making Jaime her little brother as well. Over the course of the series, Jaime undergoes significant character development, growing disillusioned with Cersei's actions and manipulations, which fuels this theory. This interpretation offers a fascinating twist, showcasing how prophecies in A Song of Ice and Fire are often layered and open to interpretation, with their true meaning obscured until events unfold. Shadowbinding is a rare and mysterious type of magic, also associated with Asai. Practitioners can manipulate shadows to their will. Melisandre, a priestess of the Lord of Light, uses shadow binding to birth a shadow creature to assassinate Renly Baratheon, shifting the balance of power during the War of the Five Kings. Shadow binding, while not as prevalent in the series as some other forms of magic, 
holds a captivating if sinister place in the lore of a song of ice and fire. This mysterious and rare form of magic, closely associated with Ashai, is most notably used by Melisandre to deadly effect. Melisandre's use of shadow binding leads to the creation of a shadow creature that kills Renly Baratheon, thereby altering the political landscape of the Seven Kingdoms. The shadow, bearing the likeness of Stannis Baratheon, is born from a ritual performed by Melisandre. This act depletes Stannis, showing that shadow binding, like many other types of magic in the series, comes at a personal cost. Fans have speculated about the extent and limits of shadow binding. Melisandre's ability to only birth a limited number of shadow creatures suggests that this magic takes a significant toll on the user, or perhaps the father of the shadow. It's also unclear whether shadow binding is unique to the followers of Ralor, the Lord of Light, or if it can be learned and used outside of this religious context. Another character associated with shadow binding, albeit indirectly, is Quaith, a mysterious woman from Ashai who often appears to Daenerys in visions or dreams. While she doesn't perform shadow binding on page, her origins from Ashai and her cryptic prophetic messages certainly add to the intrigue surrounding this form of magic. The resurrection of the dead in A Song of Ice and Fire is a topic that spans different cultures and forms of magic within the series. Various methods of bringing the dead back to life appear, often with chilling effects. First, we have necromancy, a form of magic associated with the manipulation of life and death. The others, also known as the White Walkers, utilize this form of magic to raise the dead as whites. These reanimated corpses serve the others, creating an undead army that threatens the entire realm. A character called the Knight's King, a figure from Westerosi legends, is said to have practiced necromancy alongside his other queen during the Age of Heroes. The Bloodstone Emperor, another legendary figure, this time from Essosi history, is also said to have practiced necromancy. As the infamous ruler during the Age of the Blood Betrayal, he committed numerous atrocities and was said to worship a black stone that fell from the sky. Next we have the resurrections performed by followers of Ralor, the Lord of Light. Characters such as Beric Dondarrion and Lady Stoneheart, who is Catelyn Stark reanimated, come back to life through the power of Ralor. However, these resurrections have significant consequences. As Beric reveals each time he's brought back, he loses more of his memories and feels less human. Then we have the case of Sir Robert Strong, a knight of the Kingsguard under Cersei Lannister's rule. Fans widely speculate that Robert Strong is in fact a reanimated Sir Gregor Clegane, also known as the Mountain. This theory is supported by Robert Strong's enormous size, his refusal to remove his helmet, and the fact that his introduction coincides with Kyburn's experiments on the mortally wounded Mountain. Lastly, let's discuss the peculiar case of Patchface, the Fool of Dragonstone. While not a straightforward case of resurrection, Patchface's survival after being drowned for three days and his subsequent prophetic utterances hint at the influence of the drowned god. In the Iron Islands, the drowned god's priests practice a form of ritual drowning and resuscitation symbolizing death and rebirth. Some fans theorize that Patchface's connection to the sea and his cryptic, often ominous rhymes suggest a deeper link to the drowned god. In each of these instances, resurrection comes with a cost or change, often transforming the revived person in significant ways. This recurring theme underscores the often blurred lines between life and death in Martin's world and the consequences of tampering with these boundaries. Lastly, let's talk about dragon magic. Although not much is known about it, it's closely linked with the Valyrians and Targaryens, famed for their dragon riding abilities. Daenerys Targaryen's hatching of the petrified dragon eggs is arguably an instance of dragon magic, symbolizing rebirth and power. Alongside dragon magic, the Targaryen lineage is rife with prophecies, adding another layer to their connection with magic. These prophecies are often cryptic and ambiguous, leading to misinterpretations with potentially far-reaching consequences. One prominent prophecy is the Prince That Was Promised, which is often linked with the prophecy of Azor Ahai, a legendary hero destined to fight the darkness. Many Targaryens, including Rhaegar, have become obsessed with this prophecy. Rhaegar initially believed that he was the prophesied prince, then later thought it was his son, Aegon. Daenerys Targaryen's story is also filled with prophecies. One notable prophecy comes from the House of the Undying in Quoth, where she receives cryptic visions and riddles about her future, including the famous Three Treasons prophecy. These prophecies and their interpretations greatly impact the decisions and actions of Targaryen characters. For instance, it's Rhaegar's belief in the prophecy that leads to the series of events culminating in Robert's rebellion. The Targaryen's history with prophecies underscores a key theme in Martin's work, the danger of misinterpreting prophecy 
and the unforeseen consequences this can have. Magic in the world of A Song of Ice and Fire is not a simple tool. It's unpredictable and often comes with a cost, making the plot more complex and engaging. That's all for today's episode. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content about the enchanting and treacherous world of Westeros and beyond. See you next time.